Hi, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about why Etsy search is still the same and why it's also not. And it might change in the future. It's going to change in the future based on some things that Josh, the CEO of Etsy, has said in recent tech investor presentations. And we could talk about that a little bit. But before I get started, and I am going to go over to Etsy to show you what I'm talking about, you might have seen very erratic sales patterns recently. It's probably have something to do with this. I don't know. There's a lot of things going on and it could be anything. We don't know the reasons, but you, you, you never 100% know, right? But Etsy search is working very differently now, but it's still the same underneath all of it. So keywords still matter. I just want to put that out there because people still come to Etsy. They still type things into the search bar. And even if they don't, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, Etsy still uses the keywords in your listing to decide what the listing is, okay? So don't take any of this to mean that keywords don't matter and you don't need to use keywords because you still do. You need to put the things in the title and the tags in the description sometimes, like the first part of the description they use. But you, you need to put that information in so that Etsy knows what your listing is. And this actually, I will talk about long tail keywords a little bit at the end because I've been saying for years that long tail keywords are where it's at on Etsy and when you're selling anything. And I still stand by that. This is not new information, but you, I'll, I'll talk about long tail keywords and how that might actually give you a leg up if you have a good variety of keywords in your titles and tags. Okay, so let's go over to Etsy. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. And there are multiple ways that people will search on Etsy now. So let's go take a look. So here we are on Etsy. I have not logged in. So this is an incognito browser. I just want to see what it looks like when they don't have my history on Etsy, because that's a very important part of what they're doing now. They want people to sign in so that they can track your activity, because that's a big part of this type of search engine, which is kind of, a, I'll call it a browse search engine, OK? There's search and there's browse. So a search would be when someone comes to Etsy and types in something to the search engine. They type in what they want to see. Etsy looks through all the listings. They find the most relevant ones and they rank them. But they're basing it on the keywords for that listing compared to what the person has typed in. Okay, So that's what we're all used to. And when Etsy shows us the search stats, that's what they're showing us in our stats. But Etsy recently has started adding these browse type features and there's, you know, there's relationships that go into it. So they are looking at your history when you're coming to Etsy. They're looking to see what are the last few things that you've searched for? What are the last few things that you've clicked on? And they're trying to figure out what to show you based on that. But now they've added this extra layer, which is gift mode and some of this other stuff that's popping up. And it doesn't rely on the search bar at all. OK, so let's say that I'm just a random Etsy customer. I'm shopping on Etsy and I come here and the first thing that I see is this big banner up at the top. Now, I've seen people complaining about the, the, the banners because they're just kind of a big block of color. I don't think that's a bad idea. I kind of like it, actually, because it does make people pay attention. And that's, you know, it's a little ugly. Yeah, let's say it's a little ugly, but you're going to notice it, right? It doesn't blend in. It doesn't blend in with the rest of the Etsy page and the Etsy aesthetic. It's just right there in front of your face. And that's what you're going to see. Now, if you're on the app, it might be different. Okay, so they have said, and Rachel Glazer talked about this a couple of years ago. I found the notes from a presentation they did, and she's the CFO. Um, she said that the app is a better converting method, and it converts more sales. And a lot of people shop on the app now, and they've really been pushing that for the last couple of years. So the app is going to be a little bit different, but this is just a better way to see because I'm not going to record on the app. But anyway, um, you're going to see different things on the app placement wise, but it's the same idea as this. OK, so the first thing you see is this big sale and look, here's a button that says shop now. OK, I'm just going to shop and see what's on sale because Etsy's given it to me right up at the front. It's at the top of the page. I don't have to scroll. I'm a lazy customer. I'm just going to click on things. I'm not even going to think about what I'm looking for. OK, so the home sales event. Wow. OK, let's see. Let's look at living room on sale. OK, now at this point, They've thrown us, so this is the thing that was in the featured picture, but they've thrown us into a search for living room. That is so general, all right? So living room is going to give you a lot of results. And I think that's one of the reasons that they have stopped showing the actual number of results, and they just show this here. You can still get this number if you look in Marmalade. I think that they still show the actual competition. But for living room, you know it's going to be millions of results because that's a very general search. And that could be anything. It could be like we're seeing here, tables, lamps, chairs. It could be anything. 
But I want you to look at the results that they're showing in this search page, which this person so far hasn't typed anything in, right? They've just been clicking on buttons. So the first thing you see is the featured picture that was in that little button. And then we see a row of Etsy's picks. Now Etsy's picks are, it's a mysterious thing. Okay, Etsy, Etsy's picks used to be like editor's choice or editor's picks. They've changed the name over the years, but this basically is saying Etsy endorses these listings and they don't tell us how they choose these. And I have seen people recently say they list something brand new and it's already has the Etsy's pick on it. So I'm not sure how really valid this is for anything. But customers see that and they think, oh, Etsy really likes those. So they, there must be something better about them. And they might just click on one of these. Okay, so if they do, they haven't, they haven't searched for anything. They're just being led down the path that Etsy is showing them. And that's kind of a, this is a browse algorithm. That's what I'm referring to it as. Now, if you scroll down, we're going to ignore this first row because that's ads. But you see here, popular now, popular now, popular now. Popular now just means that it's selling relatively quickly right now in the moment. Okay, so when, I'm not sure what time period they're using. They they don't tell us this stuff, but these are things that have sold relatively a lot in the last X number of hours, whatever guidelines Etsy is using. So we're seeing popular now and we're seeing best sellers. And some Etsy's picks are scattered in here, but it's generally everything has the popular now and bestseller. I have seen like this one doesn't, okay, these are ads. Okay, so ads ads might get you into this page. This is uh, right now, I don't like to tell people to run Etsy ads because they're so expensive. But if you are selling something with a higher price point, running ads might be a good way to get onto this first page because it's all popular now. Here's an Etsy's pick, okay? And we don't know how they put that on. And then best sellers. So the question then becomes, um, you know, how do you get these badges? And the popular now, like I said, it's just things that are selling. And we know that the main part of ranking on Etsy now is, is the item selling. And it's always been like that. When, when something sells on Etsy, it goes to the top of the first page of search results for a while because Etsy knows that it sells. That's basic merchandising. That has This is not new. This has been the same for years, as, as long as I can remember. And I've been on Etsy for a long time. So the popular now just means that it has sold recently and they're putting it back on the first page. That's great, okay? Except that if your listing hasn't sold, it's not gonna cycle through like that. So we've basically got everything with the badges, but remember that this is a really general search, okay? So... What happens now, they're filtering for on sale and Etsy's picks because we started on the on sale banner and then we move down to whatever Etsy is suggesting. So are all of these things Etsy's picks? Probably. I mean, these are probably Etsy's picks and popular now. Let's just, I don't want to click on an ad. I'll click on this one. This is not an ad. And we'll see. Yeah, this is an Etsy's pick. So essentially, you're not going to be on the first page of search unless your listing is an Etsy's pick and it's selling a lot right now or it's a bestseller. That's for browse. Okay. Now, as soon as someone goes and says, well, I'm not looking for any of this stuff. I'm looking for, you know, floral wall art or something. Well, I got the idea from this. All right. So let's say somebody's like, well, that's not exactly what I'm looking for. I'm just going to go up here and search. So we're just going to click on this. It's still filtering for that. Okay. So once somebody gets into that browse filter, they're kind of they're kind of stuck. Etsy is basically showing them what they want to show them, and that's how it goes. Okay, so that's that's the prob problem. It it is a problem if your listing is not a bestseller or an Etsy's pick. Um, apparently, the the Etsy's pick is what's being filtered for here, so that's a mess. Um, so let's go back to the home page. And let's say that I'm like, okay, I'm not shopping for home. I'm not shopping for necklaces. I'm not shopping for garden. Uh, you can, no, let's see, shop by category. Okay, let's do art and collectibles. Okay, now look, I still didn't search for anything. Okay, so here's again, Etsy's picks. And this is what Etsy is doing. And a lot of places are doing this. It's not just Etsy, but they're trying to lead people to listings that they know are better. And Etsy has said they want to start emphasizing higher quality listings, whatever that means. This is criteria that they're using. They're not telling us what those criteria are. My guess is that it's better photos, you know, because that's an obvious way to see it. It might be price. They might not be showing things that are really cheap. I don't know. 
But see, these are Etsy's picks. Are they still filtering for that? I don't see filters here. So nothing is being filtered, but even if they're not being filtered, these are ads, so we ignore that. These do not have the popular now, but they do have an Etsy's pick. So Etsy is showing things that it wants to show you if you get wrapped up in these filters or the, the browse type search where you're just clicking on things and you're not typing anything into the search engine. So what can you do about that? Not a whole heck of a lot. Okay. So that's, you know, if, if you have a listing that is selling that it's an Etsy's pick, it might show up more and you might be selling more of that because it's a cycle and that's just how Etsy works. Okay. So let's say that I'm, I'm like, let's, let's look for more. And I'm going to look at fiber arts because I've been doing a little quilting on the side for myself. And now we're seeing that the actual number of results, so it's a smaller number and there's no search though. They're still not showing a search term. Okay. So it's fiber arts and Etsy is still using a browse. It's not filtered by a keyword. So you can't really look at that. Um, what I would do in order to kind of take advantage of this and try to get into this kind of thing, right? Because with only 3,000, it's 3,400 results with ads. So that's not that competitive on Etsy. So if you do sell something that's fiber arts, make sure that fiber arts is in your keywords somewhere. And it's probably one of the categories I would think, but just make sure. I would go into this whole cycle. I would go down here. I would go down here and just kind of look by category, find your category, follow it down the, the trail to see what kind of keywords come up. Make sure that those are in your listings. If it's appropriate, don't shove a keyword in your listing. If it doesn't, if it's not accurate, you want it to be accurate, but just go through and start clicking on things. See right here, it's showing the number of results. That's a lot. Okay. That's super competitive. But again, it's not a keyword. It's just the category baby. Um, so you just want to kind of go down, follow the path, see what keywords they're using. And if anything pops up in this top search bar, it means that it's now thrown it into an actual search result. So make sure that that keyword is in your listing. You know, just you just have to kind of follow the path when it goes down the browse path, right? And there's not a whole lot you can do because if what they're doing... I don't see it on here. If what they're doing is showing um, only only Etsy's picks, it's not doing that here. Here's a bestseller. Here's an Etsy's pick. Here's an Etsy's pick. Now there is free shipping. Okay, here's one that doesn't have free shipping. Apparently, it might have free shipping thirty five dollars and up. I don't know, but it's not an Etsy's pick. It doesn't say you know selling quickly or whatever popular now. So it doesn't mean that you can't be on the first page, but it's a lot less likely if the keyword is that competitive. Okay. So that's how the browse feature is working. But let's say that someone comes to Etsy and just searches for something. And that's probably how most people end up on Etsy, uh, just searching for what they're looking for. Because with all the browse, they're kind of taking you by the hand and saying, look at this, look at this. And you might not want to look at the stuff they're showing. So then we're going to come back. I'm going to search for, um, let's see, I was just doing, this is very interesting. I was just doing a keyword list for western wall art right and baby nursery stuff was coming up which i thought was kind of strange cowboy theme baby nursery i can't type nursery okay so let's say that somebody comes to etsy and searches for cowboy theme baby nur nursery this is the kind of search that we are all used to right so people come to etsy they search for something etsy shows them results so now we're not doing a browse but let's see what Etsy is showing them. The first thing they show is the gift stuff. And this is going to lead them right back into the browse cycle because now we're going to look for all this stuff. And this is the kind of thing, again, you want to go through, if this is your category, just go through and look for the keywords that they're using. No keyword up here. Um, but see, this is, this is just pictures, right? They're not even showing the name of the shop. They're just showing pictures. Let's do show more and see what happens. Ah, it's like that. Okay, so it's still that category. But then if you say discover more like this, I think this is the step that it takes you. Okay, dog bags and pouches. Okay, so you can kind of assume that whatever they were working with back there in that last step was a keyword that's based on dog bags and pouches. So put this in your listing, right? So just go through and do your own research based on your own categories and see what kind of keywords come up when you click on the discover more like this. 
just see what happens and decide if you want to put those in your listings if it's appropriate. Again, don't put things in your listings if it doesn't make sense for your listing because that's not going to be good for the customer. You don't want to throw things at the customer that are don't make any sense because they're not going to click on it anyway. All right, I'm going to click back to Etsy and let's go back to Cowboy Theme. Baby Nursery because apparently this is an actual thing that people search for. Okay, so now when people do a search, they, they're shown gift mode, all right? Um, and the Etsy's picks, again, is the first line. So Etsy is trying to steer people toward things that are Etsy's picks. Now, they may or may not click on that, and I think a lot of people might, because that's the first thing, and this is an endorsement. So that's kind of a... Uh, social proof thing that when when Etsy has the authority to say this is an Etsy's pick people take that seriously and so they might click on that I don't know but if they don't and they start scrolling down here they are going to see kind of regular quote-unquote regular search results but it's going to be again they're going to show the best sellers um, best seller but see this I don't think that this has that many this says a thousand plus so there there does seem to be a cutoff of what number of listings fit this keyword that they show the thousand plus or the actual number, or maybe you have to go down a few searches. I'm not sure, but it kind of flips back and forth. Like you saw, like sometimes you see the actual number and sometimes you don't, but as we're going through this, uh, let's say that I, you know, now, now I'm going to click on this and it's going to take me to the listing. This is what we're used to with Etsy search. Okay. This is the kind of thing where people do keyword research and you look up the fact that people are searching for cowboy themed baby nurseries. And you look up the fact that they're searching for certain long tail keywords. This is where you want to make sure that in your title and tags and, and for the last part, because Etsy doesn't know where to lead people if the words aren't in your keywords or the, the, the keywords aren't in your listings. I mean, then Etsy's not going to know to lead them to your listing to begin with. And then it won't sell to begin with and it's never going to make it into the, you know, popular now thing. But you want to make sure that you have a good assortment of keywords in your titles and tags. And in the first part of the description, it says they use the first 150 characters, I wanna say, and that's characters, not words. So it's not very much, but just use these words in a natural way, all right? And like I said, I was doing a keyword list that I have keyword lists in my digital shop. And when I do the keyword research, I will repeat things. So I might find somebody searches for cowboy theme baby nursery. So I might have that in there. That doesn't mean that that exact word order match is, is necessary. It, it does help. Most search engines like exact word order match, but on Etsy now you don't have to have that and it's not required to be at the top of search results. So let's go to this listing. See, this has, I will click on this because it's not an ad, it's okay. The, the search was cowboy theme baby nursery and probably nowhere in here is the word cowboy theme baby nursery in that order i don't even see the word theme okay so you don't have to have all of the words in your listings on etsy anymore but you need to give it enough information that it can make the association between what the person typed in and what your listing is and this one has enough that has western it has cowboy nursery it's got um Let's see, baby boy nurse, cowboy print, cowboy wall art. So they know, Etsy knows that this would fit in a cowboy theme baby nursery. Also look at the picture, okay? It's cowboy nursery decor. They, they've got all the information. The picture has a picture of a crib, and I am going to talk about pictures in just a minute. Um, but yeah, you want, to, you want to give Etsy a lot of information that is relevant and semantically related for your listings so that it knows what the thing is and what it's related to, okay? So if someone searches for, let's see if this listing comes up. This says it's a bestseller. Okay, I'm gonna put in cactus wall art baby nursery because there's a cactus in that picture. And this is ads. It might see, oh, no, there it is. Okay, so I'm not sure if cactus was in there. Let me see. Cowboy, they probably have it in the tags because there's a cactus in one of the pictures. Cowboy, baby boy, cowboy. No, I don't see it. So it it could be, let's see if it's in the first part of the description. They have just repeated this. You don't need to do this. You don't need to repeat the title in the first part of the description. 
it's not going to hurt you, but you might, it, it's just better not to just for the customer reading it. But see, there's a cactus in here and cactus, cacti are related to cowboys and Western theme. And because of that, it is showing up cactus wall art baby nursery. So it's not required that the words be in there, but there needs to be some kind of a relationship to get your listing list like shown. Okay. So um, how do you get shown more in search? And, you know, conversely, how do you get Etsy to understand what your listings are so that they will show them in the browse? It's long tail keywords. And this is exactly what I'm talking about with the cactus. Etsy knows you don't have to have the word cactus in that listing. Etsy knows that that's related to the cowboy stuff. But if you put the word cactus in that listing, and you legitimately could because one of these prints is of a cactus, I wouldn't, like I said, don't put words in if it's not appropriate for that listing, but I legitimately would put that in there. And the reason is that one of the prints is a cactus, and that could make you rank a little bit higher if Etsy sees the word in the listing and then it says, okay, that is in the listing. So the, the seller is telling us that it's there and that might be a better match than we think it is with our assumptions. So I would go ahead and put the word cactus in there just to make it maybe creep up a little bit in the, in the search results. So, you know, there's, there's a few things that are going on. You might have seen weird traffic. And the other thing that's happening, and I said, oh, I said I would talk about pictures too. Etsy is also using photo recognition and they have been for a while. They were experimenting with it years ago, like four or five years ago. And it, they're from a, a couple of searches that I remember doing, it was clear that they were messing with it. It wasn't very good back then, but what they're doing now for photos, it's photo recognition, but it's also looking at the quality of the photos in order to show nicer looking photos on the first page of that browse situation and of the regular search results. So what you want to do is kind of look at what the search results look like in your categories. And it, it's going to be different depending on what you're selling. It's, it's not going to be the same category to category. But we see here that a lot of like baby nursery wall art is a picture of a baby nursery. There's a crib in the picture. But a lot of these are pictures with cribs. It, it's very clearly baby nursery, right? So just think about that. And think about how can I do a nice looking picture that gives whatever AI robot photo computer is looking at the picture, it gives them clues about what the picture is. Because the, you know, the computer is not looking at your picture and going, that's beautiful. It's just looking to see if it can identify the things that are in the picture. And it's looking at whatever they have coded it to look for, but it's trying to identify things that are in the picture. Let's say that this and this is not what it is, obviously, but let's say that this was not in a frame and it's just laying on a flat white surface. Okay, so you have a picture of a cactus laying on a flat white surface. There's nothing else in the picture and you don't put titles and tags in. And I mean, this is like the worst Etsy listing ever, but the computer wouldn't be able to look at that and say, that's a piece of wall art of a cactus. And they wouldn't know if that's a, a download printable, if it's a greeting card, if it's a, you know, a piece of wall art. They wouldn't know. Putting it in a frame gives the computer a little context. It can probably recognize that based on other things that it's been told to look for. And then putting the little crib in the picture is also probably very helpful because it sees in the context that this is for a baby nursery. So just think about context. And for example, I sell cake decorations. A lot of my pictures are just of the decorations, but if I actually put them on a cake, the computer can look at that and say, oh, this is a cake and it's a cake decoration because it says in the title and then the, the tags that there's decorations involved. And But the picture kind of reinforces that. You also have to have nicer pictures because if you're trying to get involved in the browse situation, if you want to go to Etsy and have them find you in these suggested categories, they're not going to show ugly pictures. They're not going to show pictures that are dark and blurry. You need to look for the, like I said, look for the pictures in your category and try to figure out what kind of aesthetic is Etsy looking for for this and then do that. And that's very important. It's going to be more important as we move forward because there's going to be more computers looking at pictures in more frequently. And, you know, the other thing that's going to be changing, and they have mentioned this a few times, is that they're looking at introducing some type of a chat bot 
uh, to um, help people find what they're looking for on Etsy. But it's still going to use your keywords. You're still going to need to have the right long tail keywords in there to give Etsy context and to be found for more than just that super random living room search because that that could be anything, like I said. Um, but basically they're talking about, and this was in a couple of tech presentations recently, they're talking about introducing some type of chat bot to help people find things on Etsy. So you would say to your computer, find me wall art, and they would show you everything. And then it would, then you would say, no, I want cowboy wall art for a baby nursery. And then they would show you that. Now, I don't know, I, I'm assuming, my assumption would be that that would be very tied into the keywords and it would probably sort of mirror search results because that's basically just someone talking into their phone, right? So it's it's the same thing as typing into the search bar, but you're talking into your phone. And I see some weird stuff when I'm doing keyword research. And I it's it's clear to me that people are already doing this just based on some of the searches that are coming up that people are making. And uh, yeah, that it's interesting, but I think people are already doing that on places where they can search with their voice. So that would be like Google or I don't even the, some of the, some of the assistants, the, you know, the audio assistants in the phones, you're talking to your phone saying, find me this. Um, it's, it's interesting. We'll have to wait to see how that plays out. They said they're going to see how people like it. I don't know if people will like that. They probably will though, because people are lazy. And if you don't have to type, then that's one step that you can skip, right? And it's the same thing with pressing the buttons. When Etsy says, hey, everything's on sale here, press this button. People like pressing buttons and spinning wheels. I've always said that, it's true. And people are also lazy. And so if you give them options to just press buttons, then they'll do that. But you have to use different strategies to get in. And part of it, I mean, basically it all comes down to long tail keywords. Long tail keywords are important. And if you've been following my channel and you do SEO the way that I say to do it, and I have said to do it for years, it has not changed because I don't do tips and tricks. I'm just using like basic, good, solid SEO strategies that are common sense and work for people and the search engine. Okay. So I will put a video. It's either going to be up here or up here. I don't know. I'll put a video up here. You can watch for an SEO uh, tutorial that will kind of explain it more for you. Go ahead and watch that, but leave me any questions, give this video a thumbs up, and I will talk to you later.